Hey guys, what is up? It's Dusty here. And welcome back to another crypto video. And I have a really interesting question, which is, would you quit your job when crypto made you rich? Or if crypto made you rich? I'm not exactly sure which one fits better. Let me know in the comment section down below if you would. I know a lot of you guys really love your job, but whenever I've asked this question in the past, I think like 95% of the people say yes, they would. <laughs> so let me know in the comment section down below. And having said that, guys, let's take a little bit of a look at the news for today. First of all, the light shines in the darkness posted, warning, if you have an Uphold Inc. account, this is happening during the mandatory 60-day cooling off period. Word is going around from reliable sources that multiple Uphold account holders have been locked out of their accounts with no explanation at all from Uphold. Some are reporting they've been locked out for over a week and there's legitimate fear that Uphold will continue to pick off selected customers for unknown reasons and lock their accounts without warning. The lack of regulatory clarity in the crypto space is absolutely no excuse for this kind of thuggish tactic by exchanges, especially exchanges like Uphold that are fully subject to US federal and state bankings. Security and financial regulators and Uphold touts that very compliance on their websites to gain credibility with crypto investors. Imagine if your bank or stock trading platform without any warning just locked you out of your account and kept you from accessing your money or assets with no timely explanation as to what prompted that decision. You've been warned. Now, quick little notice right here, a bank definitely has that power to just tell you nothing and hold your money. Um, so from that perspective, I can definitely imagine. Then again, it is very annoying and I have absolutely no clue what's going on. But when reading through the comment section and people's concerns and whatnot, I basically saw this right here. What mandatory 60 day cooling off period? Uphold said, hi there. The 65 day cool down only applies to deposits from the United States, banks via the ACH network and their transfer to external private crypto wallets. In this case, and only in this case, we apply a 65-day delay because of the fraud risks inherent in the AH system. Please also, one of, wait, what? Uh, <laughs> where's the rest? Uh, what, what just happened? Wait a minute. How does that work? Where's the rest of the information? Please also, one of the three, and then they stop? Is that, is that a normal thing? Um, wait, wait, what? So, um, uh, wait, let me just quickly, how do I find that now? This is going to be annoying. I guess I'm going to have to look through here and see whatever they've tweeted. Here was one of the three. And yeah, no, this is definitely not going to be found by me. Okay. Uh, is this two out of three? No, I have no idea. Well, so the explanation, no, this is also not a two out of three. Where do we go? <laughs> <laughs> whatever that's some weird twitter action by a company but all right we'll not talk too much about that one for right now what they're talking about is if you want to withdraw your u.s dollars in the united states there's basically a rule where the company has to hold that money i guess i didn't know about this but all right hold your money for about 65 days to make sure you're not frauding the entire system and there's no scam going on and whatnot because ultimately if they deposit it it's gone out of their system, can't take it back, can't, you know, prevent any other fraud that might have let you acquire that crypto. And it's a pretty, pretty interesting system. So with Binance, for example, you have some pretty difficult KYC, right? You have to show your entire face, turn some freaking circles, show every single inch of your body, it kind of feels like. Uh, and after that, I guess you have pretty quick withdrawals. And what that basically means is that if you're trying to withdraw something, it's going to be on your account in a couple of days from now. Yet, if it turned out that the people sending you money in Bitcoin, Ethereum, XRP, whatever, uh, didn't actually mean to do that, it was just like a scam and you got set up. Well, Binance has your information, but they cannot have the money anymore. And usually these things are found out within, let's say, a month or two. Uh, and so that's, I guess, to prevent from, from money getting out. Uh, so... I, I'm not exactly sure why they would lock your account. I don't get anything regarding that. But I, I do get why they would maybe hold your money for a little while. Here it, however, says something else, which is, we're very sorry to tell you that we can no longer offer you an account. 
I don't know exactly what that is all about, but uh, I got a lot of tweets surrounding this entire situation. It's not one person, it's actually quite a lot of people. Let me quickly see if I can actually find some in my liked section here as well. Here, Victoria, for example, also said, Hope you still have your XRP when you get back in. I'm missing 111,000. That's a... Wow, that's a pretty huge sum of XRP. Uphold has given me no explanation and... Uh, Daily damn, right? I'm not sure what's going on. If you guys know, let me know in the comment section. Um, but I'm just quickly warning you all for it. Having said that, make sure you check out my Instagram. A link is down below. It is the TheDestyBC, all right? I'm going to put a link down there so you guys can actually follow me on there. But I share just cool stuff in real life. Uh, while I was in Greece just now, I shared a lot of fun stuff just in the real world, basically, in my story. So I definitely think it is worth it to check it out. And I also have a couple of reels. This one is actually that I took myself. So you might want to check that out as well. All right, all right, all right. Then, um, quickly, I'm just going to tell you guys, the $1,610 bonus for Bybit has actually been extended for a cu another couple of weeks. I just saw it somewhere in one of the emails. And so... That's pretty damn juicy. And this basically means if you deposit, I think following these numbers, you're going to get yourself a specific bonus. And this bonus is, I believe, going to be given to you a couple of days after the competition is over. And that basically means you can actually deposit more in a specific time period. You don't have to deposit everything all at once. You can actually deposit, for example, within 10 times, as long as it's within this little period of the next couple of days. And a couple of days afterwards, you'll get your bonus. So that's exactly how that works. And I've put a tutorial here for Bybit, the platform itself. Maybe I'll put a link down below as well. It's just my tutorial on my channel. You can find it out. You can, you know, you'll figure it out. You'll find it. Uh, it's pretty helpful for some people, maybe. All right. Then XR Planet posted, Brad speaking at the Aspen Forum with all the big boys. I don't see Vitalik or Pump up there. Surprise, surprise. XRP belongs in the big leagues. One way XRP posted day one Gary Gensler, day two Brad Gollinghouse, day two of one eleven forty five. This is a this is quite the day. Uh, let's quickly check it out. So at first Gary Gensler talked. Uh, we already talked about exactly what he discussed. Then the next day there was Brad Gollinghouse to talk, and then a couple hours later there was gonna be. I didn't actually see this one. Not your father's space race, UFOs, billionaires, and satellite miss. Okay, 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 okay. All at the same event, huh? Pretty interesting to me. Pretty interesting to me how Brad and, and him were at the same event, but I think the majority of this we covered already yesterday. Uh, this is also something we already covered for the most part, but we didn't see Jeremy Hogan's opinion just quite yet. I am talking about Brad Gollinghouse's new new motion to compel information from Binance in re relationship to the motion to dismiss. Jeremy Hogan said Gollinghouse is getting documents from Binance related to his sales of XRP to it. This request goes to our third issue in the case, which is jurisdiction over the sales. SEC cannot disgorge profits to foreign entities or individuals. These documents will fight damages. And I think these documents are going to turn out to be a really big part of the ordeal. Yet, one thing I wondered and that I keep putting up here is, how exactly did it work with Brad Gollinghouse being able to sell XRP on the Binance exchange when he's a U.S. national and should have used Binance.us, right? How does that work? I, I still don't know. Then Xenial or something like that. If the new bill is passed, simply put, every proof of stake coin is a security. And this refers to the situation we expressed before about the new regulatory bill that could be pretty huge. Now, every proof of stake coin is a security. Every exchange coin is a security. Every coin that gives voting rights is a security. Oof, gonna be a wild ass ride. Good thing XRP, however, isn't a security. And that's pretty funny because literally XRP following all the rules does not turn out to be one. And that's kind of contradictory, right? Where a lot of others turn out to be one. Even Flare, you could, for example, make a, make a debate about and a lot of POS coins, not all of them. XRP Greece, for example, says, I'm not sure that POS cryptos will become securities. From what I understand, it shouldn't include voting rights for protocol changes in the network because in their um, Roman numero three, it said voting rights in the major corporate actions, which shall not include new block creations, hard forks or protocol changes related to digital assets of the issuer. This basically just means if you have a voting right with this entity in the company behind it. So if you have voting rights in, for example, the Ethereum Foundation, yada right but if you have voting rights in the protocol it doesn't so the proof of stake part doesn't necessarily work as far as i'm sure uh, then again it is pretty funny that xrp doesn't really follow by any of these rules and that's pretty juicy 
All right, all right, all right. Then XRP price lacks enthusiasm as Ripple shows no signs of hope in resolution with the SEC. This is your generic general FUD article. You get them once, maybe twice a day. Just people trying to get some clout by posting some ridiculously stupid stuff. And all I can say is big middle finger to you. All right, I don't know what else to tell you except for a big middle finger to the face as this stuff I see so often, but it's so freaking dumb. I despise these types of articles. It really hits me in the freaking brain. It, it gives me a straight jab into my frontal lobe somewhere. I don't know exactly where. It just gives me a freaking jab in the face. How annoying I find this. Lacks enthusiasm? What? Shows no signs of hope? In a resolution with the SEC, what are they saying? So let's quickly remember this name. I don't want to say it out loud, but I'm remembering your name. And I will definitely not read any further articles or I'll always look at them with criticism because this is ridiculously dumb. Of course, we're still excited about XRP. And of course, it looks as if a settlement or a conclusion from the judge is closer than ever, even though it might not be coming up in the next week. It's still closer than ever. Then... Crypto billionaire Sam Bankman Fried says oversight of the crypto space is evolving and that he is spending five hours a day dealing with regulation. I got to give it to him. Really difficult job he has, all right? Even though he's a billionaire, even though he has life good, right? You would think the amount of stress that this man is under, I can definitely understand. A lot of regulators, frankly, are currently going through the process of trying to figure out what their regulatory regime for crypto derivatives is going to be, he told CNBC. He also defended the decisions of FTX to continue providing quotes from Tether, despite the coin's legal trouble. And right now, it's so difficult for this guy. He's a 29-year-old billionaire. He does a very good job at what he does. I can't say anything else. I mean, he does really good. Um, but it's difficult. <laughs> Let's put it like that. It's extremely difficult right now for FTX to function properly, I would say. And yeah, what a stress this man must be under, right? Next couple of months are going to be a lot of different changes. A lot of different new um, proposals are going to be put up. A lot of scary stuff is going to ensue. But ultimately, I think it'll fix itself. And I'm not too scared. I also do wonder exactly what he has on his desk right here. Table salt. That's an um, interesting thing to have on a computer desk like that. I'm not exactly sure why I'd have that. The arrest vitamin B12, maybe some other vitamins, potentially a little plastic cup, like a battery or so. Hmm. Razor mouse keyboard. Hmm. So just watching a random live stream. Maybe no, I'm not sure exactly, but yeah. All right. So, uh, once more, things will most likely get a little bit worse before they get better in a term of regulation. Uh, but ultimately, it'll fix itself, and I'm not too worried about it. Once more, guys, that was it for today's video. If you all enjoyed it, make sure you press that like button, and I'll definitely see you guys again in another crypto video later today.